Hi, guys. Yeah, my name is Gu Rao. Uh, I'm with Portworks. Thanks for having us. Um, I'm here to talk about um, showing how Portworks works with EKS, but just a little bit of background on Portworks. Um, we focus on running stateful applications in Kubernetes. So Kubernetes provides a uh, cloud agnostic, uh, multi-region, multi-zone uh, compute layer, right? Um, our, what Portworks does is we are a storage overlay that um, sits behind Kubernetes that virtualizes your underlying storage so that your PVCs are available across multiple regions, multiple zones. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple of demos today on how that works with an EKS. Um, I'll be showing how you can run stateful applications across different EKS clusters, even if they're in different regions or zones. Um, I'll also show you another demo where you can actually um, uh, run applications on-prem and in EKS and facilitate the movement of stateful applications across these clusters. Um, just to show you how that works, I need to uh, uh, quickly set the stage for um, how Portworx itself works. Um, Portworx is just another container that runs in your Kubernetes environment. It's deployed as a daemon set, so there is a Portworx container running on every compute node. Uh, the same thing is true of uh, when running in your EKS cluster. Uh, when Portworks runs, what it does is it virtualizes the underlying storage. So when you're running in AWS, these are EBS drives, right? So Portworks will sit on top of your EBS volumes, um, and it detects which region and which zone it's in. Uh, the most important thing is it provides a layer on top of that uh, from which when you deploy your applications like databases like Postgres, Cassandra, MySQL, those containers don't actually see the underlying EBS drives. When they allocate storage, they get a Portworks virtual volume. So to that extent, Portworks is a software-defined storage solution, purpose-built for applications that are deployed as containers, managed by a container orchestrator like Kubernetes. Uh, when your applications are running, um, the container granular volumes are directly provided by Portworks. So we support a global namespace, block, um, we support uh, different kind of um, volume workflows for applications like TensorFlow and so on. Portworks is part of the CNCF stack. Um, it plugs in as a CSI provider. Uh, Portworks is the first implementation of a CSI provider. Um, and it um, basically, it sits behind the scenes and you are just using Kubernetes to allocate and create volumes and Portworks is doing all of the uh, heavy lifting behind the scenes for you. Um, I'm going to uh, get into a couple of demos, but just to show you some of the solution uh, components and, and, and just to talk about what you're going to see in the demo, Portworx takes care of the entire data lifecycle management. So when you deploy a stateful application in Kubernetes with Portworx, everything all the way from volume provisioning through Kubernetes to, to, to the data lifecycle management, for example, taking snapshots or encryption or backing the data up, all of that is managed directly by Kubernetes. Uh, it plugs in with um, various solution components, for example, Vault, if you're using key management, um, S3, if you need a target to back your data up, plugs in with Stork, which is a storage orchestrator for Kubernetes. I'll be showing how Stork plays a role in um, doing some of the data lifecycle management you're going to see today. So the first demo I want to show you is um, two different EKS clusters um, running within AWS and different availability zones. Um, very common um, uh, thing for people to do is have blue-green deployments, for example. You'll have a uh, test cluster and a production cluster. So we have a number of very large WordPress hosting sites. In this demo, I'm going to focus on WordPress, but this, what you're going to see is going to work for any stateful application, Cassandra, Kafka, TensorFlow, and so on. I really want to uh, emphasize this. We focus on storage and, and the data associated with it, right? So when I move applications from one cluster to another, it's important to note that your entire, your namespace, your volumes, your data, all of that associated with it is moving from one cluster to another. So um, the heavy lifting of managing the data is, is what you want to focus on over here. So I'm just going to log into my... Um, AWS console. So you can see here, when I click on clusters, I have uh, two clusters. One is called a test EKS cluster, which is what I'm going to log into first, and a production EKS cluster, which is where I'll be migrating my WordPress applications to. Um, I'm just going to quickly cut over to the Kubernetes console over here. You can see that I already have WordPress up and running. Um, I'll log into the backend systems and show you the PVCs associated with it. So, hopefully this is visible. Is that good? 
So you can see um, on the right-hand side, I'm logged into the test EKS cluster. Um, if you look at the uh, nodes, you'll see that I have three nodes over there. Um, you can look at the um, um, Portworx namespace, and there's Portworx already up and running. Um, if I look at the PVCs, you can see the PVCs that are up and bound, and these are the PVCs that you see um, if you uh, go into the Kubernetes console as well. Let me just log in. Click on my volumes, and those are the volumes associated with this cluster over here. Um, now what I'm going to do is uh, show you the WordPress deployment. So I have MySQL running and up to three WordPress uh, pods that are also running. You can see the deployment. Um, WordPress is um, available. I will go over, let me just copy the URL associated with this deployment. I just have a very simple basic, word, oops, sorry. A really simple WordPress site that's deployed, and this WordPress site, it has WordPress containers which have their um, content volumes which use a global namespace. There's a MySQL container associating with it which has a database volume, um, and that's what's powering this uh, test uh, site. So now what I could do is um, if I uh, look at Stork to get the cluster pairs, you can see here that uh, the two EKS clusters are paired. On the test cluster, I can see that it's paired with an EKS cluster that's running um, uh, the production EKS cluster. So what I could do now is start a migration. So I'm going to say migrate the entire WordPress application. Um, and it will, uh, what it does is it takes a snapshot. It takes a snapshot of the MySQL container, takes a snapshot of the WordPress containers, and starts migrating it to the uh, production site. So I'll just go over to the production cluster. You can see that I have three completely different nodes. Um, let me get the migration status. Um, you can see that WordPress is currently being migrated. It's uh, uh, being migrated from the test cluster. Wait for the migration to complete. And so now the two clusters are in sync. So now I can hop over back to um, uh, AWS. If I look at my um, uh, production EKS cluster, um, you'll see that this is also running. So I'll just log into the production EKS cluster over here. And I should see, let me just log in. and I'll see that my uh, volumes have been migrated over. So now I can go over to the production EKS clusters URL. And, oops. And my WordPress site has been migrated. So it's pretty easy to do these things. Um, like I mentioned, we have a number of customers that are running WordPress in, in these clusters. Um, everything that I, I showed over here can be done programmatically. Um, so we have a, um, if you're running a, a large um, uh, Kubernetes cluster, you're probably not using the CLI each time. So there's a REST API, there's a, a Golang API um, to, to do whatever I did programmatically. So, I'm going to quickly show you another demo uh, where I'm going to actually move data from a on-prem cluster, a VM cluster, to a uh, EKS cluster. So the same concept. Um, so you look here. Um, I have on, on my right-hand side my uh, virtual machine cluster. So if I get the nodes, you can see that they're running um, in uh, on-prem. Um, I have a Postgres uh, persistent volume claim. Um, I'll just look at the uh, Postgres status, and it's running. Um, if I get my deployments, you'll see that Postgres is up. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, log into the Postgres uh, um, instance and show you the Portworx volume. You'll see that there is a Portworx volume that's up and running, um, and it has a rep it's replicated the data to three nodes. Um, we will go in and dump the databases that exist over here. Now what I could do is um, get the cluster pairs. I'll show you how you pair the cluster. There is no cluster pairs currently. So what I do is I get the cluster authentication information. I come over to EKS. In EKS, I could simply apply that cluster pair. And this will cause EKS 
to drill down into my virtual machine cluster, and it has access to its data. So if I look here now, I can see my EKS environment is paired with my virtual machine environment. Based on that, what I could do is go over to my virtual machine environment and say, start migrating my application uh, Postgres. And then I'll log into my EKS environment. And if I get the migration status, you can see that um, Postgres is currently syncing. I'll get the migration status again. Postgres is up and ready. If I get the PVCs, you'll see that the Postgres PVC has moved over. Um, Postgres as an entire application and its namespace have also been instantiated. I'm going to log into Postgres and dump the databases. The other thing now that I can do since these clusters are paired is directly from EKS, I can say, show me all of the applications that are running in VMware in the namespace Eric. And it shows me these applications that are running. I can say, grab that entire namespace from, uh, from my VM cluster and run it in my EKS cluster. And what it does is it starts snapshotting those applications, uh, migrates the data, and I can get the migration status. And you can see that some are syncing, some have been migrated. So really what I'm trying to demonstrate here is with EKS and Portworks and, and Kubernetes, you can run these very complex stateful applications um, across multiple zones, multiple regions, multiple clouds. Um, again, everything is done programmatically, uh, plugs into Kubernetes, uh, simple to deploy. Um, uh, I think uh, the last thing I want to show is maybe a call to action. I think if you want to find out more about Portworks, please visit us. Um, I think the best place to get started at, at is docs.portworks.com. If you're a developer, want to use the programmatic API, go to openstorage.org. Um, running stateful applications, our job is to make it as easy as running um, ephemeral or stateless applications. Thank you very much. Come join us. So that was an amazing demo. Thank you. And it's obvious that uh, running stateful applica applications is definitely becoming easier. It's also a, a very in-demand thing. What do you find to be the most common uh, stateful application that customers are running? That's a great question. I'll put it in a couple of different buckets when it comes to databases. Um, applications like Postgres, Cassandra, um, they're pretty much at the top. Um, we find a lot of people running um, uh, message queues, uh, Kafka, oh, if they're doing a data pipeline, for example, Kafka is involved. Um, if we, I, another way to answer that question is by vertical as well, right? So if somebody's focused on WordPress, then the WordPress has an entire stack, which will involve MySQL um, and WordPress, so two different type of application containers. Um, another vertical where we're seeing a lot of traction is in the IoT um, data science space. So TensorFlow is a very big, popular, um, stateful application that we see people running. Awesome. Cool. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, another round much. of applause, please. Thank you. And then just go see Chris over there with your